Welcome, my name is Marcus and today we're going to be creating this. Now we're back in After Effects, so let's start by making the text. So now I've just written cheesy here, because you know we need it to be cheesy. I'm gonna go down here into animate with this little arrow here, and I'm gonna click on tracking. I'm gonna actually animate this tracking here. So I'm gonna go to the last keyframe by paging by clicking end, and I'm gonna set the tracking amount to uh, or keyframe the tracking amount, and then I'm gonna go to the start of the frame, and I'm gonna expand the tracking something like this. I'm gonna press Shift S to uh, there we go to bring up all these transform properties, and let's let's uh, animate the scale as well. So go to last keyframe, make a keyframe, go to beginning, let's set it to like uh, 90. Bam, something like this, so it just slowly scales in. There we go. I'm gonna press U so that it only displays my keyframes or my animated properties. I'm gonna uh, select this keyframe. I'm just gonna go into the graph editor here. I'm gonna pull this all the way up, something like this, very extravagant. I want it to have a nice slow easing. So, and at the beginning, I just wanted to start at high velocity. I'm gonna click on the scale, do the exact same thing. Click on these uh, keyframes here. I'm gonna just stretch these bad boys out and something like this. So we get this nice smooth. Uh, now that we have the text, I'm gonna pre-compose this. So Control Shift C to pre-compose. I'm just gonna call it text. There we go. Now I'm gonna go back into our main comp here. So let's start by making now the noise. So let's go up here into layer, new, solid. And we're gonna call this one, you guessed it, noise. So from here, from this layer, we're gonna control the noise across all our compositions. So let's start by going over here to effects and presets. And let's write in fractal noise. There we go, double click on that bad boy. I'm already now gonna set it to swirly because we want it to be like this nice wispy swirly thingamabob. I'm gonna increase the scale, something like the us. I'm gonna take the complexity down to three. So uh, let's also, we can already now actually, if we want to uh, give it some evolution. So Alt click, hold Alt down while you left click it, and then write a time times, I don't know, 30. Maybe that's a smidge too much, but uh, eh, that's acceptable. All right, so now we have the noise here. So this is just the beginning. So we're gonna uh, select this uh, fractal noise here, and we're gonna go up into Edit and Copy with Property Links. Duplicate this layer. Select the noise, delete, and paste. Now this noise is gonna follow our original noise completely. So this new duplicated noise, I'm gonna uh, click Control Shift C to pre-compose with all attributes. I'm gonna call this noise, noise distortion, because this one is gonna control the distortion of our layers. So I'm gonna close this by, uh, yeah, just close it, just like this, there we go. So let's start by adding a image wipe. We're just gonna use the contrast of a certain image to wipe away this image. So we're gonna go down here into gradient and set it to be the noise distortion. Now look at this coolness. If we increase the, the completion, it's gonna slowly wipe it away based on the contrast of our noise. So we can increase the completion until it is still actually white because we don't want it to wipe away the actual logo yet. Then we're gonna set the layer that it's looking at to also look at the effects and masks so that we can control the contrast of this wipe by simply adding more effects to that layer. So next let's start by adding a displacement map. That's right. Uh, where are you? This, this, there we go, double click. So this is also an awesome effect. I love using this. So if we set it to noise distortion and once again, effects and masks, then we can set the, the channel it's looking at to be luminance in both instances. We can start distorting the fudge out of this, something like this. And see now it's actually also again following the noise, which is quite awesome possum. Now the downside is that you can see it's it's gonna be uh, distorted all the time. And that's because if we look at our noise here, black will pull the values, uh, will distort it downwards and white will distort it upwards. And we actually don't want to the black to distort it downwards at any point. So we are gonna in the noise distortion apply an effect called tint. Double click on that bad boy. 
So now we can actually set the black to be 50% white in brightness or 50% brightness. And what this will do is that the displacement effect will look at this as no displacement at all. So we can play around with the contrast of this original noise and it doesn't matter, it won't go below that 50%, meaning that it won't displace downwards. So now that we have this, See, now we have uh, this niceness here. We can uh, decrease the contrast or the brightness over time. So we can start by animating this noise already now so we can see what we're doing. So let's say at second seven, we want it to no longer have any displacement. So we just pull the brightness down somewhere like this and then we keyframe it. Then we go to the beginning and do the exact opposite. We're gonna increase it until well, quite frankly, until it's quite distorted, so something along these lines. And we can even go into the text and just increase the displacement quite a smidge, something like this, really distort the living heck out of it. I mean, isn't that just, come on, all right. So now let's start applying some cool blur effects. So let's go over here into effects and let's call a vector blur, double click on that bad boy. And you can also set this blur to follow a map. So let's say we wanted to look at the noise distortion. Let's increase the blur here, uh, just a smidge. Not much is happening. And now let's also apply effects and mask while we remember. And I can turn it down to 60. You can play around with these settings until you're satisfied, you know? Just increase or decrease the softness of things. Uh, actually, I want to decrease this. So the downside to using the same map is that it's going to blur everything because it, it interprets everything above black as something it should blur. So if we take this noise distortion and duplicate it, and let's call this noise blur. Now let's take it with this tint effect here and maybe apply an exposure so that we can control it later on. Exposure double click and let's go down to text here and let's set it to look at this noise blur instead of the original one so already now we can see a little bit of a difference we can actually just uh, play around with the gamma you know uh, play around with the contrast a little bit uh, making sure that it doesn't blur as much some places so something like this and now let's apply another cool effect called compound blur now this is also awesome because we can also use a map so let's say noise blur and once again, effects and masks. And already now we can start to see some interesting looks here, right? It's blurring the map according to the contrast. So if we actually just animate this forward, you'll be able to see that there's still parts of the image that are blurred and others that are not. So right now it's, there's probably too much contrast. That's why it's doing this very contrasty, wispy thing. So I'm gonna go into noise here. I'm gonna set it all down to 40 or something. So see, this also affects the image wipe and the distortion. But as you can see here, we can just start playing around with how much we blur. So let's say 80, something dramatic, right? I think something like this, maybe under 20. You can increase the exposure so that you can see it, it blurs more where it's white or where the, the contrast is affecting it. So already now we can start to see this nice mm, wispiness, right? Where it just kind of coalesces into letters, which is already a little bit of a, come on, it's just sexy. So we can always add more movement to this by maybe going into the text and maybe adding a displacement. Displace, there we go. Dis turbulent displace. That's what I was trying to say with the thing in the thong. And let's go into seven. Let's say uh, keyframe amount, set it all the way to zero. And then go to the first frame and let's say, I don't know, 100 something like this. We can even uh, decrease the size maybe, make it a little bit more. You can play around with this until you're satisfied. And you can even press U to get the keyframes up. And let's once again, let's just uh, make this a very smooth easing. Let's go up here, just crank it up, baby. Just really make it nice and smooth. Let's go back into the main comp here. I'm gonna reduce the resolution. So now we have this nice little effect where it's just wiping on, you know, all this sexiness here. If you want, you can even apply some, some extra ghosting effect to the text so we can duplicate this text here. And let's just minimize all these. Control A and just uh, click on the little arrow. Let's start by applying a simple choker because we actually want to expand the, the mat of these letters. And we're gonna apply a fill 
otherwise we won't be able to see the new expanded mats. You can see if I expand this, but I don't apply the fill, it's just gonna expand black. We don't want that. And let's just make it completely white, the fill. And now let's apply a roughen edges. Double click on this bad boy. Now let's put this right after the fill effect and let's set it to spiky. That way we get these nice little spiky things going on here. You see, mm, oh yeah, look at that. We can even play around with the sharpness and play around with the scale a smidge, you know, make it a little bit more interesting. Something like this. Even less uh, soft edges. Uh, something like this. You know, get that nice little ghosty thing. We can even make it move by alt click on non evolution and, and writing time times 60. Maybe decrease the opacity. I'm going to press T. Just take it down to like 50 or something, you know. So we just get this nice little glowiness to it. Maybe it's still too much. Maybe 30. Uh, something like this. You know, so it just gets a little bit of ghostiness. I would duplicate this noise once again and just apply it. Uh, well, actually, it doesn't matter where it is because the other noises are hidden. I'm going to call this noise color, just like Britain. Just going to call it color. I'm going to apply a tint effect on this bad boy. And this tint effect, I'm going to actually make it, let's say, something bluish, something nice and bluish something like this, and then I'm gonna activate it. So once I've applied a tint, I'm actually gonna set it to color. Where are you? Color. This way it's applying the color of its own of itself onto other layers below it. I'm even gonna set it to use the transparency so it only applies to layers uh, or the alpha of layers below it. So if you if we can see here if we activate the alpha, it's actually not applying any alpha itself. Or we can also just you know apply a set matte uh, effect, which I apparently can't write. Double click. I'm gonna set this to be the text layer and effects. And there you go. Now we can also just, you know, alpha mat it like this. The downside is we're not getting as much color. So I'm gonna apply a curves effect, double click. And under alpha, I'm just gonna boost the alpha, the, the visibility of that layer. So it starts to bleed in more onto the letters. You can even, uh, if you want, we can also add a little bit of a background, solid background. Just put it below everything. And we're gonna apply a gradient, a, where are you, gradient ramp. I'm gonna set this white one to be something nice, dark and blue, something like this. Now it's too saturated. And we're gonna set it to radio ramp, and we're gonna swap the color so that the blue is at the top and the black is at the bottom. We're just gonna move the bottom a smidge so we get this nice, wispiness on top of this gradient. So that's pretty nice. So the downside is we're not getting much color in these uh, wispiness either. So if this is uh, the, the only thing you have in your scene, you can basically just set the noise to apply color to the entire scene. So, uh, something like this. And you can play around with the color a little bit more, you know, maybe a little bit more dark blue, something like this. Here we go. And now we also want it to be a little bit more ghosty and, and frightening. So let's apply a adjustment layer here. And I'll call this Blink. And I'm gonna apply an exposure to this layer, which I'm gonna use to make the entire scene blink. So now if we go up here to exposure, I'm gonna alt click on exposure and I'm gonna uh, write a little expression called wiggle. And then let's say 10 and 0 0.3. So Wiggle basically uh, shakes or uh, creates random values within the values you've created. So I'm saying that change the value 10 times per second and it should change between 0 and this much per time it changes. So as you can see now, it's going to do some nice little blinking thing. Blink, 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 blink. And if you want, you can even uh, make this a little bit more dramatic by, you know, creating a 3D camera if you wanted to. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'm looking forward to see what you guys can create with these ideas and these effects. And I hope you all have a wonderful day with some cheese.